Hey folks, it's Frithgar here, how you doing? Welcome back to Farming Simulator 19 here in Erlingrat. It's quite keen, that driver right there. I, so, yeah, that, that could be something that could be quite interesting, having a, a, a whole system in place like that. Uh, what else were people talking about? They were talking about fire services. Someone did mention fire services. Would you have fires? Would you have fire engines and um, people like that? And what about doctors, medical um, coverage and, and things like that? How would that be done? Now, obviously, I'm from a country where medical care is mostly free at the point of use. You go to, you go to hospital and that's it. You, you go to hospital with your broken arm. They fix you up, you walk out, and that's the end of it. Um, I know some of you have to pay for your medical care, or you have to have medical insurance and stuff like that. And um, yeah, that, that, that whole, the whole idea of that just fills me with horror. Um, that the whole idea of that. But the only thing I will say on that is I've seen cost comparisons between countries and... In some countries where you actually have to pay for your medical care or get medical insurance to do it, uh, you're looking at that you, you apparently you're being charged something ridiculous like 1,500 to treat a broken arm. Whereas in actual fact, the cost itself of the broken arm uh, for you know the cast and, and the x-ray and stuff is a tenth of that. And then the rest of it is just added on by... Um, pharmaceutical companies and so on who overcharge for everything. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure how that would work. I mean, if, if I was personally involved in designing a game like that, then it would you, the player wouldn't pay for medical treatment because that's you know, real life for me and a lot of other people. Um, the government pays for medical treatment, which gets paid for through taxes, and the medical treatment then the government because the government are the ones paying for the medical treatment through your t I mean obviously you are paying for it through your taxes so you you pay taxes and then everybody gets medical treatment but the difference being the people getting the medical treatment aren't being charged 10 times more than they should be for said medical treatment, they're just being charged what they should be charged. So, broken arm costs 150, not 1500. A trip in an ambulance doesn't cost 1200. A trip in an ambulance costs about 50, which is, you know, the, the actual costs involved. The people get paid, who the paramedics, the doctors, the nurses, they get paid and the patients don't get charged the cost of it is covered by the governments who take that money out of the tax money that is coming in so it's still you still pay for it but because the government are the ones who are securing the medical supplies instead of the individual pharmaceutical companies having deals with hospitals and so on the prices aren't artificially inflated to 10 or 20 times what they should be and that's the difference that's the big difference so uh, for the game it would be something along those lines it would be a um, healthcare system that is free for the person who's using it and then it's paid for through your taxes and so you could in a game you could be a doctor you could fix up other players um, but again, I don't really know how that would work. Like, if if I was going along, if I was doing so, if I was if I was seeing in the ultimate sim game, if I was working in a kitchen and I had an accident and I got burned and my health bar went down, how would a system be implemented where I go to the hospital, I see a doctor who's another player, and they look at me and they're like, okay. So you took burn damage on here. So I mean, you you I guess you could break it up into different types of injuries. So you've got a crushing injury, you've got a burn injury, you've got an acid injury, um, a, a, a slicing injury. So you know, something simple like that. Like the the more complex the mechanics get, the more complex the game gets to make. And 
This is kind of like only a little part of the game, so how much of it would be there? Would it just be that they don't have any particular type of injury? If you're going to work in a hospital, you work in a hospital, um, but the the way that you actually have things work is that if you get any kind of injury you just lose points on your health bar in the game okay so we lose some points on our health bar and then in order to regain the points on our health bar we have to go and take some medicine so we can go and buy medicine in a, you know basically a health pack and so that we can uh, recover some hit some health points but like maybe if your health drops below 50% on your health bar then you need to do something you need to have something more like you, you're not going to be able to just go and get some tablets from the pharmacy you're going to need to have a hospital trip because your health points have dropped below 50%, which means that you've got to have extra medical care. So you've then got to go to the hospital and you've got to be treated there. So it's a more time-consuming process because you've actually got to get to the hospital in order to get treatment. So this would encourage you then to maintain your health correctly um, and sort of work through it like that. I'm, I mean, that, again, like the whole criminal justice system... That could work really, really well, but it could also be something that could be done really, really badly. Like, how often are you going to want to, in-game, have to be sent off to the hospital? Uh, how often are you going to be injured if there's able to be injuries? You know, someone else could just walk up and attack you. I could just be driving along with my tractor and I could drive straight into somebody badly injure them and then they've got to go and take time out of their day to go to the hospital in order to be treated and if their health bar is below 50% then their performance drops as well so they're not able to earn as much money or something like that so I mean if you get paid an hourly rate of say 10 euros an hour that's that's the hourly rate that you're earning you're earning 10 euros an hour because you work for someone if your health bar drops, you're basically paid 10 euros an hour so long as your health bar is at 100%. So if your health bar drops to uh, 70%, you're only earning 7 euros an hour instead of 10 euros an hour because your health bar has dropped. So because your health has dropped a bit, then there's only so much you can do. Now, your health, maybe if you don't drink for quite a while, your health is going to start slowly dropping down. So you've got, you've got to make sure that you stay hydrated. And food, yes, eventually you're going to start to get hungry. So that could also impact it. But maybe hunger and thirst bars should be separate. But if the thirst bar goes all the way down to empty, then you start to take a little bit of a health loss over time as well. You need to go to a pharmacy to get tablets to boost your health. Just, you know, you're getting some paracetamol or something to just, you know, help with pain relief something like that maybe some extra vitamins that can help you get a decent night's sleep get some food and water into you and you can replenish yourself over time say 20 percent of your health bar if it drops below 75 percent then you would need some small medical assistance say an over-the-counter thing from the pharmacy if your health bar drops below 50 percent you're starting to get quite ill at this point. So then you're kind of looking at, well, what do I, I need to go to the hospital? It's dropped low for 50%. So instead of getting my 10 euros an hour, I'm only getting 5 euros an hour at this point. I need to get myself to the hospital and I need some medical care. So you've got to go to the hospital. It's going to take time to get your medical care. Um, and then the doctor can give you, I don't know, give you an injection, give you whatever. Um, so you don't, have to physically go and pay for it but it takes up time but in order to simulate that like we're, we're going down the route of socialized healthcare, which is the norm for most countries in the world now um so if we're going down that route that has to be paid for with taxes so therefore out of your taxes when you're earning your normal 10 euros an hour you're paying 25 percent in tax so you earn 
10 euros. That means you get to keep 7 euros and 50 cents. But you... Um, you then have access to healthcare, uh, that's road maintenance, and it, you know, it, it, that tax covers a whole lot of um, extra services that you get in the game. So you could opt not to pay taxes, but that means that you don't have access to things like the healthcare and a few other services in the game that would be covered by general taxes. And that could be quite an interesting little twist on the mechanics. So if you don't have access to healthcare and then you do go and have an accident or something and your health bar drops below 50%, you have to go to the hospital and you have to get treatment. That treatment could be 100 euros. You could have to pay 100 euros for that particular bit of treatment because you could be quite ill. Say if your health has dropped below 20%, you've got to then pay 100 euros in order to be able to bring that back up again. And that's... Quite, that's a significant chunk of your earnings like that's 10 hours if you're on 10 euros an hour that's that's 10 hours of labor that you've done that you've then had to go and give to the hospital whereas if you'd been paying taxes you've had a bit, a bit of bad luck and you've been injured so therefore your um treatment is still costing 100 euros but you've been paying two euros fifty for each hour so you've ended up paying 25 euros and your treatment is completely covered so you get to keep 75 euros you you've got 75 euros in your pocket uh, but it's then completely covered and obviously the way that the socialized healthcare works is that you don't always get these constant bad injuries and it all ends up sort of balancing out because if you're running a big business there's no way that you can run your big business without paying taxes because if you try to do that, you could get caught by the Inland Revenue and the Inland, inland Revenue uh, don't look kindly upon you tax dodging. And so not only would you then have to pay back taxes, but you'd also have to pay a hefty fine. So there's where extra taxes come in from profits from um, the companies and, and so on like that. Um, but anyway... Taxes are very, very easily done in any game. If you if you got the potential to go and earn money, because it's not just like chunks of cash that are changing hands in order to do it, uh, I'm not going to take any more now. What we're going to do now is we're just going to fast forward time. And we will go to midnight and we will see what we can do in the morning. Uh... I did. I I am gonna want to take more silage, and I still want to get a plow and do something with this field here. I'm not quite sure what yet, but we'll kind of work on that in a minute. I I would like to sleep the night first. Uh, so yeah, you 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 can have a whole medical system, which means that you know you you've got to be a little bit more careful with maintaining yourself. So you'd have things like a jump height, so I could climb up onto here and I could jump off. But if I was to climb up the steeple on the church over there and jump off, I would take a significant amount of damage, and so it would hurt. Uh, so there would be a whole medical system, and then you've got taxes and stuff. Taxes are just, that that's easy to work into a game. You could even have the choice of not paying tax if you don't want to. You work for someone else, you choose not to pay tax. Um, there's certain things that you don't have access to unless you pay for them. Um, with your in-game money and little systems like that i think could work really well now i'm gonna we're eight in the evening until seven in the morning we got twenty thousand from biogas plant income just then okay i've, I've overslept there a little bit it's nine o'clock now and we've got a bit of grass up in the field so we've got a great demand at the spinnery we got 20 grand that came in from the biogas plant over there. I've still got more here to be able to get, but I've got 37,000 euros now. I've got two tractors down there that we can potentially go and do something with. Now, I was looking at tractors. People were saying about what tractors I should get. Um, I really like the idea of getting that one. 
And what else did we have? There was... Hang on, let me look through. This mod right here, this case tractor here, we've actually got some different options for the tractor in here. It goes all the way up to... We start off with a 155 horsepower tractor at 90,000 euros. And it goes all the way up to the Steyr right there at 9270, which is 276 horsepower. Or we got the Magnum, the case version. That goes up to 260. That's an extra 50 grand. So, and that's 140,000, which is actually not too bad. That's a, a mid range tractor. I don't have very many tractor mods at the moment. That was something I was going to look at was potentially some other tractor mods. Because a lot of you have been saying that you think I should get some cheaper tractors into the game. Rather than holding myself back and bottlenecking myself on that quite as much as I do at the moment. So I'll definitely consider... I'll, see if, I'll have a look at different tractors and stuff and see what we've got available. And... Um, I'll take it from there. So I'm not going to make any promises at the moment, but I will start to have another look. So we've also got, we've got a lizard right there, 8,000 euros. I've got a subsoiler there that needs 180 horsepower. We're not going to pull that one, and we'd probably struggle to pull that one. These here, I don't really want to get into those. If we're going to do plowing, we'll use a more traditional style of plow. That one says 120. That's uh, mod one. Um, those case ones, we've used those a lot. I'm not going to go to that one. Uh, the Alpine pack gives us this one right here, which is a 1.2 meter plow. says it requires 85 horsepower. I actually quite like the idea of using that, and it's only 14,000. So that's well within our balance at the moment. This one here is 14,000. It's two and a half meters wide does require 150 horsepower to pull it. I don't know how good those bits are, but I kind of like this one. I like the idea of having that one there. So I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to have that one. Make a wee purchase just there so that we can start doing a bit of plowing. That means we're also going to want a cultivator. We're also going to be wanting to cultivate our fuel that we've got right here. So we're going to need to be looking at disc harrows, the cheapest ones. That Now, I don't understand this. This one here says it requires 320 horsepower to pull it. I've never understood why this one requires so much power. Just doesn't make any sense. That one there requires 100 horsepower. It's nice and simple. Uh, we've also got the Alpine farming one here which i rather like this one this is sixteen thousand. that does look pretty good that'll allow us to do a bit and is three meters wide so again this one's a little bit expensive but i haven't got very many that i haven't really got any i've got that one got that vario pack right there we could go and take this uh but that is Something to do with the plow, I think. I think you hook that onto a plow. Uh, same with that one. That one, they have it work like a cultivator, but it's it's not technically a cultivator. So that's 18,000, and this one over here is 16. So I think we'll go with that one. So we've got a cultivator for after we've plowed. Now, we don't have to do that, and some of you did say that I shouldn't go and spend money on a cultivator if I don't have to if I'm going to struggle to fit the rest of it in. So we've got that Amazon seed drill right there, which is one in particular I was going to look at. Uh, we've also got the Alpine farming pack. This is a power harrow one. So this is a single power operation. However, this is 40 grand. This is a little bit out of our price range. The only thing that I don't like about the power harrow approach, it's the cultivator on the front, is that they very often, when you're using them in the game, or the ones that I've tried so far, they do actually go and remove the seed before they put new seed in. And that mechanic means that if you do some rounds around the outside of the field, it then goes over it and it does it again. And that's the bit that I don't really like. Uh, some of this, I mean, this is all rather expensive stuff. Apart from these, we, we've got these Amazon ones over here. Now, that one's 600 litres. This one holds 830 litres, 4 metres wide, which is 
pretty good. Um, honestly, it's this one here. We can't direct drill with this. It's only three meters wide, but it is a thousand liters. So we can get going with that one. We can go and do some work with it. Uh, it doesn't have the option for planting anything extra, but we've at least going to be able to put our grass in with that. And then we can start earning a little bit of money to go and get some extra stuff. And we just need a cultivator after that. So we can go and buy this one. Wait a minute. We've already got one of those, so I don't need to go and buy one of those. I just remembered. I'm, I'm, I'm literally, I'm just looking at these, and, I'm, and then I was like, oh, yeah, hang on a minute. We, we already own one of those. So it's it's the, the cultivator that we're after. We just want the cultivator, and this is going to be that alpine farming one. I actually quite like this one, and it's also one of the cheapest. So we'll buy that one there. There we go. 16 grand, and this is where I find out that I've actually already gone and bought the plow and cultivator already. No, I haven't. Okay, I haven't done anything that daft, but I have already got the seed drill, so I don't need to worry about that one. Uh, we will... So I'll get it with this one, which means that I'm going to... I'm just going to leave that right there. We could also just take a look. So we've got three fertilizer contracts, we've got two weeding ones. There's a harvest job available already. I'm going to leave all of that. I'm going to get the plow and we're going to make a start on plowing our own field. I want to plow up the whole field. And we also want to then divide the field into two sections. We're going to do a small section for root crops. But we're going to need to be able to harvest the root crops. And this is where it's going to be difficult. So I'm not going to commit to doing the root crops just yet. But what I do want to know is, do you want me to grow potatoes and use the small potato harvesting equipment? Now, by that, what I mean is, where are we? Uh, potato technology in there. Do you want me to get some of this stuff? And these here, where they, they dig up the potatoes and then they leave them on the ground and then get this one. I mean, this one is nearly 100,000 to actually go and use. You'd have to pick it up. You have to do it by hand, uh, uh, manually. We, we, you can't use the hired help to go and do that. Now, my problem with that is that I buy that one. I've also got to buy one of these, so probably that one. Uh, that's still pushing us to 100,000 for that one. And then we've also got to go and get a planter, which is one of these two right here. So that's 110,000 that we need for that. Now, if we go for the base game stuff, there's 20 grand for that one. So we could still go for 10,000 for this one. So you need a potato planter regardless of what we do. And then you need 100,000 to be able to harvest said potatoes. We've also got to have a home cutter in order to be able to prepare. So you're looking at 110,000 for harvesting. A little bit more, and we can have the hired help doing it. There's another 40 to 50,000, and we have the hired help doing it. Uh, that one right there is actually still only another 40,000 because you don't have to have that one. So it's 10 grand less. Uh, so, but, uh, but anyway, yeah, so we're looking at. 160 grand for harvesting because you've got to get that one and that one or you just get this one on its own or a hundred thousand for doing the harvesting with one of these maybe a hundred and ten thousand so we've got a significant outlay for doing potatoes this method i think could be very very dull because we have to do that ourselves we cannot do that with the hired help now Option B is, at the moment, we go for beet technology. We go for that one right there. You do have to get this one as well. So we're still looking at 120,000 for harvesting. But planting is altogether much simpler because to plant the sugar beet, uh, you just use a standard planter that we've already got. So we would just use the, the seed drill to go and plant those. I think it's a seed drill. It might be the planter. I'm not sure. But... Yeah, it's, it's easier to get into, so it would be a little bit cheaper if we were to go into that. Still a significant outlay. So at the moment, I'm not wanting to go into either of them. But 
if we were to start really working to save up 120 to 150,000 for potatoes or sugar beet, would you want me to do it? So get into the comment section and just let me know, do you want me to be going into potatoes or sugar beet? And if you do, which one is it, obviously? Which, which one would you like me to get into? Um, or should we hold off on doing that for a little while and we will focus on doing some other things instead to start with now i did previously talk about not doing any arable crops myself just focus on grass related items and several of you actually said you like the idea of that my main reason for doing the plowing is because there's all the shrubs and bushes through the field and also the field itself says that it needs ploughing, but I'd also quite like to just plough up the um, edges of the field a little bit and just maybe expand the field in certain places. I'm not going to do that immediately. What I wanted to do first was actually plough the field and do the bits that need to be ploughed, like uh, uh, all, all the bits that we own. Then we can take a look at the field and we can decide if there's any particular areas that we want to expand out a little bit, make it a little bit bigger, and also maybe do a little bit of landscaping just to um, define a couple of areas on the map and then we can sort of use that to um, have uh, two separate fields on there because uh, several of you said that you wanted two separate fields and you do like the idea of me having some kind of track across the fields so that we can go and use them i'm just coming back here by the way to get some fuel um the fuel is starting to get a bit low on our tractor so i'm just going to come in here like this bring that bad boy up there like that and fill that one up we're also about halfway down on the repair status on the tractor so i think i might actually no i'm gonna leave that for now i'm gonna leave it and then when we pick up our cultivator we'll also use the oh wait haven't i got my own garage now didn't i get a tool i think i got a toolbox so we should be able to repair the tractor back over here and have a look pretty sure i did get my own toolbox if i have ideal we'll be able to use that Bring you in around here, and yeah, there we go. Thought I did. Thought I went and got it. Okay, so I will go here. One around that way, and repair the tractor. 110 euros for a bit of repair work in there. And now we can go over to the field and we can start ploughing. Now, I was thinking of starting ploughing at the top of the field because it's quite a common thing to do. You plough uphill. So you turn the soil up the slope when you're doing your ploughing. That, that is a, a very, very common thing to go and do. Quite normal to go and do that. So if we're going that way... I'm looking at the map right here. That's the direction of travel. So I think it's kind of there. There's the edge of the field right there. So if I press H here, it helps us use the classes. Unfortunately, folks, that is all we have got time for today. A massive thank you to everybody who has earned their way into the Great Book of Names. To find out some more details about all the names coming past, please head into the description and click on the link to the Discord. It's a link to another video. The link is on the other video. Uh, please also consider checking out the links there for Nitrado, who provide gaming servers for games like Farming Simulator, Minecraft, Ark, and several others. And there's also Fanatical, who will help support your gaming habit by providing you with cheap games and also giving me a small commission on anything that you buy using my link. Uh, if you've enjoyed this particular video, then please head down below and give us a like. And if you really enjoyed it, then please tell your friends all about me. Get them to come and watch as well. That would be awesome. And until next time, thank you very much for watching. This is Frithgar. Goodbye, and see you later.